My stoma is stretching and expanding, which is painful, but the good news is it is fixable. Treating my chronic pain is proving to be very tricky. Goes my mom. She's going to Starbucks. Hippo. Okay, so good news. Well, bad news is my stoma is stretching and expanding, which is painful, but the good news is it is fixable. So when I secure my tube, I always have the grip lock here and secure it this way. But my surgeon said that's putting a lot of pressure right here, and this is the way my stoma is stretching. So I need to rotate where I secure the tube, like put the grip lock here and here and here. And by rotating it and allowing the pressure to distribute itself, then it should fix itself and go back to a little circle, how the stoma is supposed to be, instead of this big oval it's becoming. So when I get home, I will move the grip lock to this side of my tube, leave it there for a few days, here for a few days, just distribute the pressure and then in four or five weeks March 13th however far away that is I see him for another follow-up and we're gonna switch this tube to a button and we think that'll help a lot with the pressure issue because this dangling tube is heavy and it puts more pressure because of the weight and with my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome a button would just be less weight for my skin and if y'all remember the type of surgery we did, we elected to do the row and Y, which was a little more intricate than a traditional J2 placement, but he said it's better for me because it's easier to change out my feeding tube. So when I go to the office, he's just gonna deflate the balloon of this tube, take it out, put the button in, and inflate the tube that easy. And if all goes well, I should be able to do my future tube changes by myself at home. My doctor just needs to send a script for the feeding tube button to my home health company. They will deliver it to me and then my surgeon said on March 13th, bring the kit with the feeding tube in it to the office and we will exchange it. Because by March 13th, he expects the stoma and my reconstructed small intestine will be healed enough to safely exchange out the dangler for the button. And my mom and I have been sharing the smoothie from Smoothie King, it's peanut butter and chocolate. And from here, we gotta to go to my pain management doctor, which is quite a drive. I am hurting today, and being in the car does not help with that, but gotta do what you gotta do. What'd you get? Uh, cappuccino, no cappuccino, cafe leche. Cafe con leche, I'm gonna put it here. Right. Did you know that Judd has started drinking coffee sometimes? Isn't that crazy? That's because he needs to stay up. He usually does monsters. On the way to my pain management doctor, I feel like I might fall asleep before we're going there. So I just had to stop and use the restroom at a gas station. I really suddenly had to use the bathroom and I had to go so bad, I didn't have time to like get the wheelchair out of the car to Harlow. I just went in as fast as I could, which is still not all that fast, but I ended up falling and my mom can make me laugh about anything because she's, from her perspective of how I felt, I was like coming to the car and then, what did you say? I said, where did she go? I just saw her coming, you know? I just put my head down for a minute for the phone. And I said, what? She's not there. Where did she go? <laughs> then I have to go like this, you know, and then she was on the floor. Say, like, what? I can get my eyes off you for a minute and you fall? My legs, gave out. <laughs> my legs gave out when I was going over the ledge. But anyway, this guy saw me fall and got out of his car and came to help, which was really nice of him. He was like, are you okay? Yeah, my legs just don't work that great. 
But anyway, I'm fine. Use the bathroom and we're still going to my pain management doctor. Potty breaks for Harlow. And we're going inside. appointment update. So the first thing we did was schedule my next ketamine and Toradol joint injection procedures. If you want to learn more about those, check out this playlist. I had to miss my last one because it was just too close to my surgery and I am struggling right now because of that. The soonest I could get in for one was February 27th, so I got to hold out a few more weeks. The first place we're going to do the injections is in my mid-back. I have a rib that is frequently dislocating, causing a lot of issues there. And then four weeks later, we're gonna do the Toradol in both of my hips. And then four weeks later, I'm gonna do them in my neck. And then after that, I follow up with my doctor again. Then we discussed the other areas of my treatment and treating my chronic pain is proving to be very tricky. One area we've had issues with is finding a muscle relaxer that works for me. We have tried so many oral, pills that I crush and put through my J-tube, liquid, nothing works. The latest one we tried was baclofen and it did absolutely nothing. And so my pain management doctor suggested an IV pain medication because my body will absorb that and it will be effective. And it's called methocarbamol. We gotta wait and see if insurance approves it, but he's hopeful that'll help me because I'm just, I cannot keep spending hours at a time unable to do anything because of the muscle spasms. And I'm thankful for a port that allows me to use IV medications, especially when my malabsorption makes other options just useless. And then he presented me with another option and I'm just not quite sure how I feel about it yet. He thinks that my pain is really hindering my quality of life. He says when I dislocate joints, it is a injury that causes a lot of pain and he was asking me how many hours a day do you spend stuck in bed or on the couch because of pain how many activities can you go do a week after you do an activity how is your recovery after that the next few days and he just does not feel my pain is well controlled so he wanted me to consider taking a narcotic pain medication on an as-needed basis now, I know a lot of people use pain medications to live their life, and that is wonderful. I'm not concerned about like the pain medicine stigma. What worries me is how pain medicines negatively affect my body. The main reasons are that pain medicines make my narcolepsy worse. When I'm on narcotics, I can't take certain important medications. Narcotics tend to lower blood pressure, and I already have chronically low blood pressure. Narcotics can lower the seizure threshold, and I have a history of epilepsy. I have been seizure-free for a few years, but I don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. And then, of course, it negatively impacts motility. I already got serious issues with that due to my gastroparesis. We discussed all of my concerns, and I know with every treatment, there is going to be a give and take. Like, yes, those are concerning reasons, but Sometimes the pain is unmanageable. And I trust my doctor. He has experience in treating patients with complications like mine and conditions like mine. I was just not feeling well enough to make a good decision on this topic today. Plus we agreed it would be a good idea to talk to my other doctors, like my GI, to see what they think. But um, 
my pain management doctor does think a narcotic as needed could really help with my quality of life. My pain doctor has this analogy I like. He says, everyone has a pain cup and chronic pain warriors like myself are usually at the brim. So if you add a new pain, it's going to overflow and become overwhelming. And right now on top of my normal chronic pain, I'm also dealing with surgical pain. So I agreed that until I heal more, I will use my pain medicine from surgery instead of pushing through the really hard times. And even my surgeon today told me to do the same. Personally, I am hoping that as I progress more with my surgical recovery, with the addition of the IV muscle relaxer, and as I get back into my ketamine treatments, plus my physical therapy, massage therapy, and I should be getting my AFOs and joint braces from Hangar Clinic soon, I'm hoping with all of that, my pain will become more manageable again, and I won't need a narcotic as needed just because of those negative effects it could potentially have on me. But if I need it, I need it. We'll just wait and see how things progress. And as I go along in this chronic pain journey, I will be very thankful to have an understanding doctor who is very compassionate towards his patient's pain. And of course, thankful for my fellow chronic pain warriors who let me know I am not alone. I completely forgot my joints. Oh. I forgot to mention another important aspect we talked about. So my doctor encouraged me to try CBD oil for pain and originally I was opposed to trying it because I was worried it would lower my blood pressure too much but he said that's actually not a major concern. Our concern would be that I have a reaction to it but I think it's worth trying if it can help my pain and it's natural. This is CBD, not THC which gives you the psychogenic effect so Hi Harlow. I will be trying that. Did we have a long day, Harlow? We did. You were so good. I feel kind of bad because I haven't been able to take her to the dog park or on a walk in a few days. I just haven't been feeling well. But as soon as I can, I will take you because I love you so much. And I'm also very thankful for my mom who took me to my doctor's today and made me laugh even though I was hurting. Thankful for my wheelchair that helped me do what I needed to do. Honestly, today was very difficult, but I conquered it. And I did take a painkiller from my surgery before getting into bed and it's helping, so I'm thankful for that. Now I'm just ready to get some sleep. And I think Carla's ready too. So with that, I will say goodnight, and thanks for joining us on our adventure.